Okay. Hi, I'm Robert Barron. Uh, I'm a software engineer at the Massachusetts Open Cloud. Joining me on stage is Steve Gregory from Cyverse and Hong Shu, who works with me at the MOC. Here at the MOC, we are providing services to both people who require computational services as well as to people who are providing computational resources. What we are describing today is our collaborative effort to provide a simple to use GUI, uh, GG, that is designed to complement Horizon. Although Horizon is a very powerful tool, and being so powerful and providing so many options, many of our users have found it to be intimidating. When I think of our users, I think of a group of computational chemists down the hall from me. They would write their code locally, but barter for time on a much faster system. While they may be experts in quantum computing, they may not know how to set up a router, the first thing that you have to do in Horizon. That said, our goal is to provide them an interface that automates common tasks that most of our users that they would need, as well as most of our users would need, but also allows them to use Horizon to work with the same project while, when they need the power. This goal extends to our federated cloud, where we will have different portions of our cloud, where we actually have different portions of our cloud being administrated by different groups, adding to the complexity. Although we are designing this to work with Horizon, there are more degrees of freedom. We are using GG to simplify common operations that all of our users will encounter. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Our, our basic strategy is to make commonly used use cases simple. For example, with my typical user, the computational chemist, all they require is a big externally facing VM. To accomplish this, GG will provide a set of default security groups, a default network, and all they need to decide is how large a VM that they need. If at some point down the road, they decide that they want to collaborate with more individuals, they can change the security groups to allow them to come in using Horizon, or they may want a cluster of VMs they can do so also using Horizon. We are also providing services that are not found in Horizon, such as Cloud Dataverse, which we have built on top of OpenStack. So our basic, our basic requirement, one of our basic requirements is to allow users to switch between Horizon and GG. As a starting point for GG, we chose to fork Cyverse's Atmosphere Troposphere project for the following reasons. It provides, it provides a similar user experience that we wish to provide to our users. It is open source. It has a similar user base and some maturity. To give you an idea as to the basic architecture of how GG is and what we're inheriting from, from Cyverse Atmosphere Troposphere. We have the front end at the top, which is their Troposphere project. We have the middle layer, Atmosphere, which is their Atmosphere project. Um, I'll discuss this in more detail uh, after a brief or after an introduction to Cyverse Atmosphere Troposphere by its lead developer, Steve Gregory. Thanks, Rob. Today I'll be talking about Atmosphere, some of the problems that we've encountered, and how to, how to solve those problems for our user base. First, I'd like to quickly go over the history. The Atmosphere project was started in 2011 as part of Cyrus's Cyber Infrastructure, an NSF-funded project at the University of Arizona. Our first supported cloud was Eucalyptus, and in 2012, we, we expanded that support to include OpenStack. So what is Atmosphere? Atmosphere is an open source platform for the science and research community 
which simplifies the cloud computing experience for users with a wide range of computational literacy. We did this by creating a straightforward user interface and a robust REST API that allows users to, to view their cloud resources, collaborate with others, and focus on the science. Since releasing OpenStack integration in 2012, we've continued to see steady user growth. Over the last five years, Atmosphere's user base has increased from 600 to over 6,000 users. And during those five years, Atmosphere itself has transitioned from a single cloud to a multi-cloud interface. In 2016, we took that to the next level, allowing Atmosphere to become a platform that can be self-hosted by other sites like the Massachusetts Open Cloud. The first problem that Atmosphere set out to solve was simplifying the complexities in cloud computing. For our user base, that meant creating that simple interface, Atmosphere Airport, that allowed them to see only the most critical cloud resources, instances, images, and volumes. The most important part of Atmosphere Airport was making it as easy as possible for the scientists who had never been exposed to cloud computing to launch and then gain access to their instance. So we solved this by creating sensible defaults that enabled a one-click launch, requiring users only select the instance size to be launched. To help users access their instances, we also provided browser-based terminal and VNC functionality. This enabled our users to go from launching to viewing their instance's desktop in just two clicks. But sensible defaults alone are not enough to, allow, to get users to launch and then access their instance. Behind the scenes, the Atmosphere API was responsible for ensuring that security groups and networking were initialized, and after the instance had made it to active, was responsible for the allocation and assignment of floating IPs and a boot script that would secure the VM as well as uh, enable that browser-based terminal and VNC access before we handed that, that instance over to the user. And as it turned out, there were a whole lot of scientists who are interested in free cloud computing resources. So many, in fact, that our clouds were constantly at 100% capacity. And with no incentive to delete instances, we found that a lot of those resources were sitting idle. So we addressed this by, starting, by tracking the amount of instance usage over time and assigning a monthly quota to our users. Users who went over their quota would have their instances stopped until their quota was, was renewed or supplemented. That would allow others access to the cloud. The next problem that we encountered is that the rapid development of OpenStack meant a new release every six months, but our production systems were not quite as agile. We needed to maintain compatibility for, our, for the production systems and ensure that the latest and greatest version of OpenStack could all be supported by Atmosphere. So we created an abstraction library that relied on LibCloud and the OpenStack client tools, which enabled Atmosphere to manage OpenStack versions from Havana to Newton. Although Airport was created with multiple clouds in mind, it was only capable of showing one cloud provider at a time. Since our users had two or three OpenStack providers to choose from, this meant selecting a new cloud provider and waiting for a page refresh to keep track of their resources across clouds. Additionally, we realized that our image catalog was starting to grow, but that our users didn't have enough information to figure out which image they should be launching. So we addressed this in 2014 by creating Troposphere, a single page app built with React and Backbone.js that had, a version, that had a detailed image catalog with support for versioned images so that users could see the established history of an image and how that image has changed over time. It also, Troposphere also focused on grouping instances, volumes, and images into logical projects rather than based on the cloud provider and the credentials that created them. Here's the project details view in Troposphere. You can see that the multiple OpenStack Clouds project has three instances, each from a different cloud. And here's an example of a versioned image as displayed by Troposphere. Each version has a description that explains what has changed and represents a glance image on one or more OpenStack Cloud providers. 
With the introduction of Troposphere, we were able to change our focus from making cloud computing easy for end users to making cloud computing easy for OpenStack site operators. And in early 2016, we became a self-hostable platform so that other organizations could host their own copy of Atmosphere and Troposphere and manage their own clouds. In February of 2016, Jetstream Cloud became the first organization to use Atmosphere as a platform. And in September of 2016, Massachusetts Open Cloud became the second organization. Every organization that adopts Atmosphere installs it with a different end goal in mind. And in order for us to become a more effective platform, Atmosphere and Troposphere had to become more flexible. This meant implementing a custom theme for our interface, making authentication a plugin that could be easily swapped out for other implementations, and converting our instance deployments to Ansible, enabling site operators, site operators to choose what they wanted to deploy on an instance before they handed control over to the user. So that's Atmosphere in a nutshell. If you have any questions or are interested in using Atmosphere for your site, please come see me or Andy Leonards, the lead developer of Troposphere, after the presentation. And if you're looking for a job, we're hiring, so check out the link below for open positions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. From that description, it is obvious why we selected the Cyverse Atmosphere Troposphere project as our starting point. We do have some significant differences. For starters, Gigi's target audience is different. We have a combination of academia, academic users and industrial partners who are also using it. Also, we only support OpenStack. This drives our requirements to work with Horizon. Um, Horizon, or say, so Atmosphere, another key difference is that Atmosphere needs to work with multiple clouds. Now, to work with Horizon, we need to make sure that users are defined in OpenStack. Our users are defined in OpenStack, whereas in Atmosphere, the users are defined in their middle layer. In, in, Projects are also, in Atmosphere, are collections of cloud resources, whereas in GG, projects are defined in OpenStack. Atmosphere needs to have, have a model of authentication authorization, as well as multiple layers of authentication auth authorization for each of their cloud uh, that they connect with, whereas GG can just use OpenStack's model for author authentication authorization, which is Keystone. GG does not need to act on behalf of its users. Um, and we are exposing other cloud, other OpenStack cloud and MOC services such as Cloud Dataverse. To, to summarize, the modifications that we have made to GG involve, mainly involve interoperation with Horizon. To highlight, to highlight the differences on the, on the left is what we're inheriting from Hiverse Atmosphere, and on the right is where our current architecture the major point here is that the architectural differences are minor. Right now we are a fork, however, it is feasible that this could evolve into a single code base. In order to work with Horizon, we move the primary authentication authorization to using Keystone in OpenStack, so that, that sort of pinkish color is moved down to closer, moved out of the middle layer. And this was done in GG using the mechanism described earlier by Steve involving his plugin architecture where we took, just took the plugin and passed the credential straight through to Keystone. 
We're using the catalog returned from the unscoped token to get the project definitions and the catalog returned from each scope token to get the instance definitions. So our projects effectively in GG become defined by the projects in OpenStack. This way we can maintain a consistent view of each project using OpenStack's access control mechanisms without explicitly building it in to GG. We are also working on to bring online other MOC services, OpenShift and Cloud Dataverse. And currently these are being loosely integrated, as you will see in the demo uh, given by Han Chu. Okay, so this is the landing page of Gigi. Um, it basically tells you about what Gigi is and what services that Mock currently supports. Um, as you can see here, we support, support OpenStack, Cloud Dataverse, and OpenShift. Let me just log in, use my um, Mock OpenStack credentials. Just one second. It's the same as Horizon. We use Keystone for user authentication. Um, it's gonna take yeah, well, that's fast. Okay, so on the top, you can go to different component pages by clicking um, this. So let's go to the marketplace. In the marketplace, we have mock services and GG enablements. Um, for the GG enablements, they are the tools that enable GG to become a mock marketplace. Rob and I are gonna work on this in the, uh, over the summer, so uh, I won't show you guys details here today. In the services, we have a launch a new instance tab that I will show you in a minute. And the second thing here is Cloud Dataverse. So click on this, you can go to the Cloud Dataverse site, and then from there you can select the data file that you want to compute with, and then you can go back to Gigi to do some data processing job with OpenStack Sahara. My colleague Jeremy, which is here, is going to give a demo about this on Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Um, the third thing here is the Red Hat OpenShift. Currently, it's just a pointer to the, um, our OpenShift dashboard with um, having single sign-on in the future. So you, our user don't have to really tap in their credentials again just to be able to see that. So um, let me just log in with using the same credentials that I have used for login to Gigi. Um, that's I won't do more. Um, let's go back and launch a new instance. So if you want to launch a new instance, you just click on this, and you will see a list of images that we have. Um, let's say if we want to launch an instance with R pre-installed, and it's Ubuntu 16, so you just click on this, you will see a launch button right here. All you need to do is just click on this launch button, you will see a form that is pretty much the same as the Troposphere has. Um, that's all, all you need to do before you launch a new instance. If you don't care about the name, you can just leave the way it is, but um, I'm gonna change that to Monday. And you don't need to worry about this. Oh, you just need to make sure the instance size is big enough for the image. Let's use a median and click. So here you will see a list, all the instances you have in that project and the one that you just launched. And from here, by clicking on this icon, you can go to Horizon and check. Again, in, in the future, this will be a single sign-on, so you don't have to tap your credentials again. So here you see the instance you just launched. I just launched. Um, Zero minutes? Yeah, okay. If I refresh, I will have a floating IP. Yeah, there we go. We have a floating IP here assigned, and you can just use the IP to SSH into the instance. Mm, yeah, and as you can see here, all the instances um, have different state, uh, status. So for example, shut off, suspend, and then you can go here and check. It's pretty much the same map mapping between each interface. Mm, I think, yeah, at the end of the demo, I would like to show you guys a, comp a video that is basically a comparison between Gigi and Horizon for launching a new instance at the first time. So you get an idea about how fast Gigi could be. 
Nope. This is not the one that I want to show. OK. So I have this new user called OpenStack Demo. Is it? OK. And this is, it's the first time for the, for the user to log into both interfaces. And as we know, in Horizon, you need to set up the network, router, subnet, to really before launching a new instance. But in Gigi, all you need to do is to select an image and upload your SSH key, and you could have that instance to be launched. Make me faster. Make this faster. See, so, yeah. So in Gigi, we are about to launch a new instance. It takes about 54 seconds. And in Horizon side, you still need to make sure you set up the network correctly and then upload the key that you want to use. So I think it's take about 124 seconds. Uh, yeah, and see here in the, this form, you have to go through all the tabs that you have to make sure everything is right before you launch the instance. Yeah, it's 126. Okay. So coming next, Rob going to talk about the future features that GG is going to have in the conclusion. Thank you, Hansu. In the, in the future, we're planning to have single sign-on so that we only have one, one account that someone has to use to sign on to their BU account, for example, and all the all the other applications will use that, that login. We are also in the process of working on a open cloud exchange, a marketplace, a federated cloud. Um, and as you saw in the user interface during the demo, there's a series of enablements, things that have enabled us to be able to federate the cloud, and a number of features. Um, we are specifically working on bringing, bringing up OpenShift. We expect that sometime at the beginning of summer. And we are also working on Cloud Dataverse, which is mostly, mostly there, as will be seen in the demo on Wednesday. The take home message is that we are working on improving and simplifying the user experience. Our GUI will be interoperable with Horizon. We are not planning to replace Horizon. And we are planning to use, have Gigi, our GUI, be a gateway to all of MOC services. And here's the two reference talks. Um, thank you for your time. Any questions? Okay, I think what you're... Could you I th the question? <clears throat> Let me rephrase the question. You were commenting that in the one slide we were showing, we were showing instances from different OpenStack versions. And later on, I'm mentioning that we are using Keystone, hence we are only using, we can only show things from one project one set of instances from one Keystone project, right? Yes. And that is one of the key differences between Atmosphere 
and what we're trying to do with Gigi. Because if, you, if, you did, if, if we did something like that in Gigi, in, in our GUI, when you switch over to Horizon, you wouldn't see all of your instances, right? And so that, that's one of our key differences. And one of, one of the things that we've changed is made the projects come from OpenStack. No, no, we, we only have one, one keystone. We have a federated cloud. And so we have one keystone service that, that we're intending to hit a, a proxy service that allows the cloud to be federated. And so between keystone, the, the proxy service will handle the keystone to keystone authentication. So one login, one identity provider, multiple clouds. Any other questions? So I was curious, have you got any interest for the cyber stuff from a community outside of scientists? You see it more broadly applicable? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, because it was an NSF-sponsored project, uh, or NSF-funded project, our uh, main focus and driver was the research and science community. Um, and Initially, we started as the iPlant Collaborative, and that was focused only to um, plant scientists. Since we've become Cyverse, we have expanded that, uh, that uh, audience to be generally all data science, uh, and we have seen great success in that area. <laughs> Looks like that's it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.